My whole world around me sounds like I'm in a pillow. <laughs> a pillow. On that note, what's up, everyone? Audrey Drake here for our next episode of Super NVC, and I'm here with Richard George. Hola. Samuel Claiborne. What's up, everybody? I'm just going back to the Wii menu right now. And Jeremy Parrish. Friend video. to man and beast. You can't see him right now, but he's dressed in a whole, whole fancy setup. He's got a tie and everything. That's how I roll. That's how Jeremy rolls. But what you can see is a uh, screen of virtual console games that we found on a uh, dusty old Wii in the <laughs> office. <laughs> dusty old office a virtual Wii. console, Sam. So we're going to be playing that? some random virtual console games. <laughs> it was going to be in honor of the Wii U's virtual console launch, but... <laughs> but now it can be in honor of the fact that if you want to play virtual console games, you still have to play them on Wii. Yeah, that's right. Nintendo, like a console, day or two. Nintendo Virtual Console hasn't launched. Yeah, so wa- for those of you who don't know, Wii the U. big system update that's going to improve load times and launch the Virtual Console was supposed to come this week. It was supposed to come a couple of days ago, but we're still all waiting for it to show up. What do you think about that, Jeremy? I know you have some lovely opinions. That lovely makes opinions. me <laughs> salty. It makes salty. Jeremy salty, <laughs> Kooblings. That's no I'm, good. I'm, I'm angry. Or is that up. good? Is it, it angers g- up the blood, is what uh. I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's typical of Nintendo's completely slapdash approach to virtual console. I mean, this is the the one company that is sitting on the greatest treasure trove of video game history, and I feel like they have an obligation to the medium and just to like pop culture to do a better job of curating and archiving it. And Absolutely. they give us this pathetic drip feed of and th- video no games, still video games that we've already played before. The yeah. drip the drip feed has been a problem for the Wii, and they launched in uh, uh But it started strongly. It was okay at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you really remember the, the first year of the Wii? the problem is that they've already established a virtual yeah, console, really and you can't get thing. it on the Wii U. Do you remember the first year of the Wii when they launched with like 20 <laughs> games, and we were like, hey, that's pretty cool, and then yeah. they would release four to five a week? And we used to complain, like, oh, I wish these games were a little better. Like, there's a, there's all these great games, and there's, like, a couple of bad ones. And why are these bad ones here? They're stupid. Yeah. And now we're just like, yes, please give us Urban Champion. Just <laughs> anything <laughs> on this system to keep us playing old video yeah. games. And it's like, really baffling, because they've already established, like, over six years, a pretty good virtual console on the Wii. It doesn't have everything, but it has a lot of great stuff. But now they're not bringing all of it over to Wii U in one shot. They're going to release it little by little. Which yeah, I mean, the, the problem with virtual console started when Virtual Console launched, which was that Nintendo didn't create a decent shop account system. And so everything that you downloaded was not linked to any kind of central database aside from Club Nintendo, which apparently is worth nothing. And (laughs) you have to, like everything's locked to your console and there's no way to transfer things. And so they they can't get these games onto Wii U if you've already paid for them. And believe me, I paid a lot of money for my virtual yeah, console games. Yeah, you can games. play them in Wii mode, but there's no way to actually transfer them and have them. Yeah. Just so we on talked about this earlier. Wii right now, screen. you can take a Wii, log into a this, this eShop, buy as many games as you want, put them on an SD card, take them over to the Wii U, put in Wii mode, and then play them. That's the only way to play them. Right, but you can't play them natively in the Wii U itself because of their stupid, arcane, incompetent lack of account systems. And it ha- it's not something that's gotten better. Like, if you buy digital versions of your 3DS games, they're still locked to your device, and if you lose your system, they're like, oh, sorry about that. Guess you have to buy those 20 games all over again from scratch. And So, buying games over again is one thing, but not having a catalog to buy them from is, like, completely different. And, like, man, there's nothing to play on the Wii U. What if there was 460 virtual console games? Right. And, or sorry, there's 410, 410 yeah. Yeah, virtual <laughs> console games. That's crazy. That's a lot. I mean, yeah. I always said that like they could have gotten away with what they're doing now with Wii U to, a, to an extent, especially with their loyal fans. If they had virtual console, particularly if it had GameCube on it, as well as uh, we're releasing steady streams of uh, HD Wii ports like Skyward Sword or Mario yeah. Galaxy. Yeah. Like That could have actually helped them a lot, kind of helped stall... Yes, the st- the same truth would be, that, you know, there that like you're not releasing original software. There's no Wii U software that's really important to have, but it would have at least, you know, kind of made the pain of waiting a little bit easier. Well, now mm-hmm. it's like, how long are we gonna have to wait to get all these games back just to where they were? Like it took what? Oh, they're never six, going to get. It back. took like six years just to get the first Mega Man X on the Wii Virtual Console. Like I, I don't want to wait until I'm in my no, 30s it took, it took to play that years. on my Wii U. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> Oh gosh, she yeah, the thing is, it's never going, like, the Wii U Virtual Console is never going to get to the state that the Wii Virtual Console did, because I think Nintendo has come to the conclusion that it's just not worth it. 
like the the trouble that they have to invest is not worth the money that they're going to but, bring but in. But that's yeah. weird because they just had a whole press, re- you know, event about Earthbound being. A virtual yeah, they'll console bring game, over you know? like a few games that they know that s- will sell well. But you know, a big part of Virtual Console should be third party games, and I don't think third parties are that interested in oh. contributing. Oh, lucky one. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't think third parties are that interested, and I don't think they're interested in dealing with. The licensing constraints. There are things that showed up on Virtual Console, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. and the entire IRIM catalog that were dis- you know they were they were taken off at some point because like the TMT license fell through for Ubisoft, and on um, on the IRIM stuff, IRIM left the games business and became like a pachinko company. So everything like R Type and all these other classic IRIM games Th- were delisted from Virtual Console. Virtual Console. Right. Like, if you downloaded them for Virtual Console while they were on sale, you can still download them to your Wii, but you cannot buy them new, and you cannot possibly think that you'll ever be able to buy those games and play them natively on Wii U. Yeah. But, you know, the, the whole, like, the whole buy it all over again thing might not even be so bad. You know, the, the locked accounts and things like that. It might not be so bad if, again, they were offering some kind of catalog if, if the Wii Virtual Console Wii U Virtual Console were appreciably better than the Wii Virtual Console was but it's not no it's not and and like there's there's just something to be said for a nostalgia box and even with the end state of the Wii Virtual Console it's still like it's still such a small sliver of even the NES and Super NES which I'm just shocked by. I mean, you know, it's like one fifth of the of the amount of games that came out, and not even all the Nintendo games were released. Star Fox never came out. I know? mean, if you look at the history of Nintendo's use of Virtual Console, and this is turning into a Retronauts episode with all the <laughs> complaining about Virtual Console, but but if you look at their history, Nintendo has this this tradition of announcing new platforms for a Virtual Console that they'll you'll see like three games for and then you'll never hear from again like what happened with sega master system what happened to commodore 64 what happened to virtual console arcade which was like the centerpiece of iwata's 2010 gdc talk like we got six or seven games and then nothing what about uh game gear on 3ds virtual console yeah that was kind of weird four game gear games there were a couple of sonic games that they announced that never actually came out yeah like what's happened to all these games do they just not care well some of them actually did come out in Japan. If you look at the Japanese release list, they get like two games a week every week. We get one game every other week. So there's this huge discrepancy happening. I really want. I don't know why. Is it because Americans are cheapskates and all we do is steal video games? Because, I mean, if you look in the yeah. comments on any IGN article about Virtual Console, people are like, I'm already playing these games for free on my hacked Wii. Well, yeah. thanks. Like, you're part well, of the problem. You're why we, we won't get them. I'm still waiting for Castlevania 2 on 3DS. I really want to try it I know, it yeah. I, I mean, I messed around with it as a kid. I don't the think game's I, great if you just have a guide next to you. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really appreciate it as a kid, and now I know better. Yeah, uh, play it sitting next to Colin Moriarty. He'll, he'll <laughs> give yeah. you the, the pointers. But yeah, and more promising Nintendo news, according to some IGN sources, it looks like the next Scribblenauts game is going to be DC superheroes related. Yeah, let me let me pull up the article. We literally just ran it a little bit ago. Um, Mitch uh, Mitch Dyer reported this for us. Uh, the next Scribblenauts game is a DC superheroes game, according to multiple IGN sources. Um, however, apparently it's going through some alterations from its original design. Name c- might change, that sort of stuff. But well, it's going to uh, be a hundred times more epic. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Apparently, it still will remain focused on sort of a DC-oriented license. Um, that's very strange. And news. according to Mitch's sources, it'll be announced for PC, Wii U, and 3DS ah. at E3. So you think if you summon Batman, he can just beat anyone? Because Batman always wins. Right. Yeah, right. One uh, here. Uh, one source what describes happens you, a what happens if you write anti-life equation. <laughs> 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 That'd be awesome. Uh, one source describes a linear level beginning in the sewers beneath Wayne Manor where a hungry killer croc won't let Max proceed. When a hamburger isn't enough, a dynamite sandwich sends croc into a rage, leading to his arrest. Robin keeps the situation, uh, situation under control, allowing Max to make his way inside Wayne Manor, where Batman has been manipulated by the Joker. What is this you're reading? Uh, I like how when you read about story comic books, your voice becomes oh, okay. that of the comic book guy. So, <laughs> as you travel below the wings, <laughs> yeah. so this is similar to like a Lego, Lego DC game. Uh, no, I mean this is Scribble Knots DC, right? Well, I'm so. just saying, like it's it's they're using that kind of like taking it into their own universe, but with inspiration. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I I like I like the idea. I like the fact that um, they kind of caught into the fact that hey, we have this game that's extremely flexible. We got some licensed characters in there. Yeah. What if we turn this into our own Lego franchise? Yeah, and it's you know an original IP that we own as opposed to Lego, which has all kinds of licensing 
values out the butt, I'm sure. Inevitably, the last one they got the Nintendo franchise in there, but they could have done a lot more with that. They could have done a lot more. I mean, it was more just a guest or you know, a little surprise thing or extra. But I mean, I. I will laugh if uh, Warner at some point has Fifth Cell do a Marvel Scribble Knots game, just like they're doing a Marvel Lego game right now, yeah. which is just sort of That'll all sorts of amusing happen. to me. <laughs> cool. I well, mean, they don't care. Like, so what if it's Marvel properties? They're the ones making money off of it. No, so it's true. I mean, that's it's corp- corporations are not so much about pride as they are about big, fat stacks of greenbacks. That's true. That's true. So. Are there are there any new games on the Wii U Virtual Console that did not come out on the Wii, or is it no. just exactly? It's just old ones, like <laughs> really? Super did Mario. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. there's not not any not a single one of them. They're only made off the list of what's supposed to. Yeah, so I saw one fiftieth of the Wii Virtual Console. Was F Zero Super Mario World? I think Audrey's looking up a list right now. Ice Climber. He's oh, I can go in the four four of them are games that already came out at at thirty cents. One of which, sadly, I missed because I didn't turn on any game system for like a month before I got married. Well, F-Zero was that one, right? Yeah, which I, I can live without. And you know, you know what was funny about that is that, oh, and Kirby's Adventure is another Okay, one. yeah, so the official list is eight titles. Balloon Fight, Donkey Kong Jr., Excite Bike, F-Zero, Ice Climber, Kirby's Adventure, Punch Out, and Super Mario World. Look, not to be like a dick about this thing, but like, I don't care about anything on that list. Really? Like, as good as not some of those Super games Mario are. World? Super Mario I don't, World? I, yeah, why do I, I, can, I, why I will, do I I will about never that? not about enjoy Super Mario World. Yeah. Oh, I think, yeah, yeah I mean. I, I don't, you know, Mario World's a great game. Like, I'm not even denying that. I'm not denying the, best the, like, game the list, quality right? of the games, but I'm just saying, like, I don't care. Like, I don't want them. I don't, uh, I'm so totally that, nonplussed by that list. That brings so up just, a point of mine, which is that, like, so I, everybody who bought a Super Nintendo owns Super Mario World, right? So, like, even if you have, like, a collection of old games, which I recommend you have over the Virtual Console still, because it's a better experience, I think that uh, there's games that the Virtual Console has on the Wii, which you cannot get in any form, and there's some which never came over here, and those are the games that, like, I think the Virtual Console, like, totally excels at it, you know, it mm-hmm. has, yeah. like, a, you know, yeah, Rondo a preservation Blood. system. Yeah, Rondo of Blood, which is a Castlevania for uh, Turbo CD. Or things like Earthbound, which you can't get, you know, easily right. Reasonably, anymore. Yeah. So Stuff there's like a couple that. of those. Super Mario RPG is on the uh, Wii Virtual Console right now, which is, e- you know, very hard to get. Yeah, Final it's Fantasy 2 and 3. It's a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is Chrono Trigger's not on there, though, is it? It is. Yes, it's it is. Like okay. yeah. I know Secret of Mana is. Like, all those yeah. Square RPGs from the 16-bit era yeah. cost at least 50 bucks for a bare cart. But seeing like that... 100 or more for the know, box. And another one, Mega Man X2. That, that game is not easy. Right, but X3 yeah. is extremely expensive, and yeah. that's still not on and the it's system. it's not on there, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's annoying. And, and I think, th- so I, I, and I think you've talked about this before, Jeremy, but there's, I don't think you can do FX games, Super FX games on the Virtual Console, and that's why Star Fox is not on there. And uh, I'm sure they could. They just in, haven't. It's in Mega Man X3. There's a, there's an FX chip in there. No, it's not an FX chip. It's a special chip. Um, it's just something else. It was else. a Capcom design special there's chip. Because there's rotating polygons. Right. No, no. There, the there's, a, there's a special chip. I can't remember what it's called, but X2 and Crap. X3 both used <laughs> variants on a special chip that Capcom created. Um, but it's not an FX chip, which yeah. was a lot more sophisticated. But yeah, I, I'm sure that Wii Virtual Console could do FX games or FX2 games. If Nintendo went to the trouble of creating the emulators for them, well, but and Yoshi's Island did. has an FX chip. In it, right, so. it has it had the FX too, which was even more powerful. Yeah, and what's a shame is that the only version of Yoshi's Island that's available to the public now is the GBA version, which right? Is which is on 3DS. Presumably, GBA games are coming to the Wii. Wait, wait, U, wait! By the that's way. on 3DS, yeah, but only if you're an ambassador. That's right. You can't buy but, any GBA but check games this out. on it's Virtual Console. It's not a good version of Yoshi's Island. It's At decent, all. but yeah, it, it's not nearly. It's a cropped it's not faithful. screen version, right? <laughs> because it's cropped to play on the GBA, which did, couldn't do the full resolution of the. Well, uh, and not only that, yeah. but it also doesn't do all the super FX two stuff, like touch, touch, uh, fuzzy, get dizzy. Oh, like it's when my you favorite touch, level in any game. I know that's the coolest level, and it's it's really really borked on the uh, GBA version because I was the GBA kind of just uh, didn't have the prop. So I'm playing Earthbound at home right now, for the first time ever, and. Uh, which I know is kind of shameful, but at least I'm playing it. And I'm playing it on a, an actual cart. But, you know, the little cutscenes in that are very psychedelic. And they're very funny. Or, sorry, not the cutscenes, the battle scenes. Battle scenes, oh, yeah, with the backgrounds. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah, i got to say. Um, <laughs> but I'm doing pretty good in Castlevania. Um, but, yeah, that, those little psychedelic scenes reminded me of the Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy. I was thinking about it the whole time. Mm-hmm. And how great it is to, like, take graphics and then morph them like that. I can't believe that they did that in... Yoshi's Island for just that one level. It looks so good. But I guess they use that probably to blow up the other characters too. Is that the same? 
Is that the, the FX2 effect? chip? Yeah, yeah the, the, the really cool thing about Yoshi's Island, and we're getting way off topic here, but what the hell, we're yeah, talking about Yoshi's old Island. Games on, on um, systems. Yeah, the great thing about Yoshi's Island was that it took the FX2 chip, was, which was designed to create you know polygonal 3D graphics, and they said, what if we didn't do that? What if we used it to do all these like crazy, wacky special effects with 2D graphics? So you have things like the little... Uh, the little shy guys who jump at you and spin as they jump, and you have touch oh, fuzzy get great. dizzy, and yeah, you have enemies that uh, you know like bashful so bird or whatever. So it's the rotating get, get, Yeah, it's all those like the things you never saw any other video game do, and huh. yeah. yeah, like um, PlayStation games started to do that a lot. Symphony of the Night did a lot of those same tricks where it was like it. it would create things with polygons, but they looked like they were you know bitmap sprites because they were sort of grafted on there. And so it created this sort of very fluid, very dynamic 3D or 2D game space using sort of like 3D gaming technology. And I, I am really a big fan of that style because it, it gives 2D games a little extra punch, but at the same time, it doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel like, I don't know, like you lose something when you take a, a 2D game and make it with 3D graphics. So and it's not a bad style, but it, it does lack a little something that, so that the, games like the that So the virtual have. console is just software emulation. And I know traditionally there was like problems with emulating certain types of stuff, like look, we're just talking about the FX chip. Like, is it, there's, Nintendo could figure that out, right? It's not like some like lost art to like play an FX chip game and software. They they created like, it. Do ROMs work? You know, like are are there ROMs for Star Fox that you can play? Or are they all messed up? You know, I'm not sure. Um, I I'm not one of those people who hacked their Wii, so I honestly can't say. I know that there are people out there who have hacked their Wii to play like every classic video game ever. Yeah. But I cannot speak to that personally. So did you buy virtual console games? Oh man, I bought like ninety percent of them. Really? Okay. Wow. I've invested a lot in virtual consoles, so that's why I'm kind of salty. That that is <laughs> that, that must really salty. really drive you crazy. Then it does. It really. So does that me. mean at one point you had a collection of actual you know plastic games that you got rid of or that you don't have access to anymore? No, I mean I've I've tried collecting through the years, but real life always gets in the way. Like I had a really, really amazing Super NES and Super Famicom collection that I built up a few years ago. Yeah. But then my wife lost, well, at the time, girlfriend lost her job. And so, you know, we kind of had to pull the purse strings tight. And in order to support her, I ended up selling all that stuff off, which, you know, so was that it got us through. SNES and NES games and stuff? Was that yeah, I mean, it was the Super Famicom, Super NES. And um, oh, so you had a it was, it was right stuff before stuff. the Super <laughs> Famicom, Super NES started to kind of explode as being popular for collectors. Like, if I sold that stuff now, yeah. I could probably get two or three times as much as I got totally. five years ago. Yeah, I remember $2 a so game it really back sucks. I used to find copies of Earth. Like, I, I'm, you know, I've been a collector of cards for years. I used to find copies of Earthbound, like, turn them around for 50 bucks. Like now, I go on eBay and they're e easily two hundred, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm just like, ah, I just should have held on. Though I never had the full box. Well, I'm I'm really sad that um, back, you know, when Earthbound was newish, like a year or two old, and no one bought the game. I saw copies oh. of it, like half a dozen copies of it at, at Kmart for twenty bucks. You're kidding me! If I had known, yeah, <laughs> I would have hoarded those and put them in a safety deposit box or something. That's amazing. You know, I didn't realize there was a hidden treasure there. That's a good one. People watching will l let me know if I missed any, but I think I've gotten every treasure nice so work. far. Uh, but right now I'm about to die on the third level, which is sad. So I I am not a virtual console person, and like I freely admit I you know. Have you never downloaded very many? Or? I, I I haven't got. I don't think I've ever got a virtual console game except for ones that you cannot get here. Right, right. And uh, we were talking about this a little bit before the podcast, but you know the lost levels. Like, mm -hmm. that, that never came out here. I don't have that one specifically because I thought it was a port of the Super Nintendo. Like, I thought it was clipped out of the Super Nintendo remake of Lo Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels. Wow, that was great. Um, but I, don't, I guess it's not. I don't know. I need to look into no, that. No, it's, 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 it's the Famicom Disk System. Like, I would get that, for instance. And That's then there on 3DS was, now, so. There's a game called Euphoria, which never came out here. Came out? Oh, is that on 3DS? It's yeah. on 3DS now, yeah. yeah. So I think that's really clever. Like, that's a way to get people like me who, like, really care about collecting and, and having the actual cards and stuff to, you know, care about ROMs as a way of preserving stuff, whereas, like, normally I completely scoff at ROM play. In fact, like, right now I, I was just uh, 
I was playing, one of my things with ROMs obviously is that all the controllers are initially are so different than a Wii controller. It's a shame to play some of these games on, you know, contemporary systems, let alone a PC. Like, if you're, if you're, if your whole, like, history of games experience is playing games on a PC ROM, you know, like, ASDF keys thing, like, yeah. sorry, dude, you're you not playing games. I think games. it's passable on the Wii Virtual Console. I don't understand why they never came out with attachments for all the old controllers. Like, I would have bought an NES totally. controller attachment, that, SNES. That came out in Japan, N N the Super Famicom one. But what I was yeah, that was, a, that, that was a Club Nintendo bonus. Yeah, there's a Club Nintendo bonus. Well, they never the even released them for Famicom our Club Nintendo. Nintendo. Right. We just right. have no of course, way of getting no, no, them. I'm just saying in Japan, they got a nice great, thing. freaking yeah. awesome reward for that. I'm but really anyway, sad so that I, just I, I came across a copy of that or one of those in Japan and didn't buy it. Oh, really? really yeah. sad I didn't. I think you can buy them on eBay. Um, but yeah, the, the the classic controller, I was just playing an NES game on this, and the buttons are freaking reversed. Like, how, how is this even possible? How, I, don't, I don't get it, man. People are crazy that they Nintendo would play doesn't emulated you, games Sam. in such crappy circumstances. So in that sense, I, I like that the original... Well, here, yeah. Do you think people get paid for their old games when they go on sale, too? Like, how does that work? Like, if I if I released a record in 1965 and it came out on iTunes now, like, that's I'm still getting paid for that. Yeah, like, there's I mean, no publishers way are still getting paid for the game. So publishers are, but, like, nobody that worked on this game is still getting paid for it. Oh, well, it. no, but, I mean, everyone who worked on video games did work for hire, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, a crazy like, idea to me. Look at look at uh, look at Pac-Man. Toro Iwatani never really got any money for Pac-Man. He did it as you know, work for hire for Namco. Yeah. And that they made never really hundreds on, of though. millions of dollars off of it. And he, like, eventually became an executive there after 20 years or whatever. It was just you know, like the the mindset was, yeah, you're you're working for us. You're doing what you need to do. Did you get your meat over there? Yes. Yeah, you did. Ah. Uh, so noble. All right, I'm gonna switch. So have game. we have we complained about Virtual Console enough? Well, now should now we, we complain, complain about, about E3 instead? I think we've praised it too. I mean, we all yeah, want it on the Wii U, but we want the full. Oh, the, the concept's no, amazing, the but Nintendo's actual just, approach to it is. I wish the whole terrible. catalog was available on Wii U. Right from and the I don't see the, the financial benefit of them not having every single game available. On the, I can't believe they're gonna roll them out. I just that's just mind blowing to me. I, Yep. Yeah. Well, especially I mean, now when there's such a drought of games. Yeah, like, it, would, it would make uh, sense any, if they were actually keeping a decent $100. schedule and, you know, these games were actually coming out on a regular basis, but they're not going to do that. It's going to be this pathetic, irregular cycle, just like it has been with 3DS. They're, I don't know. But back to more, play, guys? more cheerful news. A little bit of bomb. Uh, I'm sure most people listening have already heard that Nintendo just announced that they're not going to be having their normal, large-scale live presentation at E3 this year. Which was something of a shock to That's all right, of no our readers girls and all this of us. Year. So instead, they're going to supplement. They're going to have several Nintendo Direct broadcasts and a smaller press gathering where they're going to show off games at their booth. So, what do you guys this think? Is, well, I got to say, all shocked like, before in the we office. even talk, this was a, it caused a lot of hubbub more than I thought it, it would. Not only on the uh, inner tubes, but in our office this morning, there's a lot of yelling. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of yelling. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm Were sad you not I there? No, I remember I stayed home this morning so it. I could cover Virtual Console's launch, and then that didn't happen. I, yeah, I hung around <laughs> until like 9.30 waiting to update the system, but it never mm -hmm. happened, so I just just came in. No, I'm sorry I missed the yelling. I'm, yeah, I'm surprised that angry people yelling, are surprised. Just like emphatic beliefs, you know? Like, people think that this is, like, spells doom for Nintendo, which, like, no. which yeah, is funny so. for me. Like, I, I just, like, you shouldn't care how well the company does. Just care if they have great games still. I mean, exactly. Well, and the thing They're is, like, great. this is more disappointing for the fans and just mind-blowing for us. Like, I, uh, it's hard to understand. But, but why is it's it not, not that mind-blowing? Really why, why do you think it's mind-blowing? Nintendo has been traveling this path for years and years. It's true. I mean, like, if you look even historically, they never went to Tokyo Game Show, even though that was mm -hmm. the big show in Japan. They had their own event which was Space World, and then eventually they decided, oh, we don't need to do that. But they kept doing E3 because, you know, that's kind of the big well, thing. Well, especially this but past year, they've been using the Nintendo Directs more and more and just more closely wanting to talk directly right. to the fans. Right, but I mean, so if, you, if, you look, if you look beyond E3 and look to the way Nintendo used to do press events and things like that, they would have these big press things where they would take everyone up to Seattle, and yeah. they'd have, like, big presentations with Reggie fils and whoever else, and they'd show off games. They'd have, like... Uh, I don't know, when, when Twilight Princess came out, I guess, was this before you were in the press? Oddly? Yes. Definitely. Yeah, so yeah. For before Twilight Princess came out, like, you know, two weeks before, they took dozens of people up to Seattle to Nintendo headquarters and let us play <laughs> uh, Twilight Princess for an entire day. Like, they stopped doing those things because as DS and Wii started to gain traction, 
among people who weren't the core fan base, they realized, you know, we don't necessarily have to make, you know, do all this messaging to the core fan base. We, we have those people in our hands already. They're going to love us no matter what. What we really need to do is get Leah Michelle in commercials and, uh, you know, so their have solution. her talk about how, how amazing yeah. style savvy So is. their solution is to do, not do E3, but do Nintendo Directs. I don't know if that's a... Uh... Well, I mean, who's who's looking at at you know, the E3 press conferences? It's the same people who watch Nintendo Direct. Now it's a much bigger audience. Much well, I don't is, I don't think it is. I think is the people are, I think well, I think the, the I think, conference I think the mainstream the coverage comes the from The conference other stuff. themselves is more of just a big fanfare for their biggest fans. Right. Like whatever news they announce during the direct, just like this last direct, everyone will pick up the gaming press, all the rest of the press will pick those stories up no matter what. And no Nintendo matter makes what announcements at E3. I like what if they're spectacle the Newsweek their fans, and the, the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times are still going to pick up that information. Exactly. It's, it's going to get out there no matter what, whether they do it at a Anyone press conference. Anyone who is going to buy Mario HD is still going to buy it, regardless of whether they have a live presentation. Right, and the, the mainstream press is still going to report on whatever Shigeru yeah. Miyamoto, the creator so of Mario, says. It, it won't affect the company at all. Like, they as could very well, like, It's just have a big disappointment for fans who look forward to the presentation. It's a little more than that. I disagree. I think really? that uh, this Wii U is not in an ideal state where it can afford to just not... But the press conferences are a much bigger deal than a Nintendo Direct. Like, they are significantly more... But, but nobody said it's going to be an... What if it's Mr. T? No, we actually... And, 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 we know and like, Sam, Hulk we know, Hogan come out... No, and they, Sam, like, we know exactly what I mean, it is. We know it's... Well, that was a terrible. That was a terrible show. Yeah, but like press but conferences they, they have been have awful so many go. times. Like, what, what difference does it make how, in what format? They're I mean, doing. if you look back to last year, but Nintendo's press conference was so out of touch, or not so out of touch, but so out of step with what everyone else did. Every like Ubisoft, EA, Microsoft, and Sony, all four of the other press conferences were extremely loud, extremely violent, just like shooty, shooty, shooty. Mm-hmm. And Nintendo, Nintendo was no like, hey, it's well, fun Nintendo animal ads. friends. Well, here's the, here's here's the thing. Here's Nintendo the had no games. Time and money, and like, no matter what, their message is going to get out there, and it's going to be hit or miss. So. I mean, Nintendo Why had no it? games last year, so it's not even, I, I, I think yeah. it's a mistake to even really like point to last year as some sort of like example. But like, well, but, but you're talking about the spectacle and the event and stuff. I mean, y- the subject matter, they could still have I'm they talking have about. Yeah, it's not, no. They're not saying that they're not going to be a presence at E3. They're just not going to have that. And they could have an awesome. They're not having a pep rally. Yeah, they but they're have still a, going to or be. Or they could still have a pep rally, just office. not going to be they're at the Nokia. They're still going to have their little evening no, thing. No, Sam, they're not having. So we know exactly what they're doing. They're having more than one Nintendo Direct ahead of the show. Yeah. And then they are doing some sort of hands-on session with media. There is right, no right. like. So you're you know, saying there's not going to be a broadcast during the time of the show at all, right? There is not. The, yeah. are what they're, uh, during the time of the press conference, there is some sort of media event where we're at their booth and we're playing their games. Gotcha. I don't know exactly what that is. That's that's the approximation of that. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. there's some sort of investor analyst thing that's happening still at Nokia. So, so it's you not don't even think like they'll even have like right, a direct like occurrence? Uh, the the understanding is that the directs are supposed to come before E3. Well, so what, what if you don't think they're like going to do the, the evening roundtable things too? I mean, here's the thing. Well, like, here's my point is that. E3 is a set fixed thing that happens every year. It has happened for 15 years, and but Ninten- the pro- press conference yeah, has only started five Nintendo years ago. Nintendo has already I mean, launched its next generation console. This press- year is going to be all about the next Xbox, the next PS4. Why not have all their news out before E3 so they can get some attention before everything goes to the next? And I mean, it, and, and maybe that. I mean, PS4. I'm not saying that this isn't going to work. I think it, 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 to me, it's the. I said this at Game Scoop, but it's the. Craziest smart thing they've done in, since they, you know, made the Wii Mote. But um, I mean, and and it might work, it might not. It's a big risk for them, I think. Um, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, you can get all your stuff out ahead of time, but then it looks like you're not really at E3. And if yeah. E3 and this message to the tens of millions that watch E3 and the That's CNNs a good point. and the it doesn't MN- look like they're at E3. I mean, they yeah, risk- but I mean, there's going to be so many hands-on impressions of games coming out of, of sites like it's IGN. Not, um, it's like, not the same. Like the hands-on impressions are important, and yes, that is news, and people will pay attention to that. But the scale like at show which floor, the so. scale at which the conferences, att- you know, capture attention, and you know, the CNNs and the whatever news networks are there. But, I mean, those outlets covered the last direct. You know what I mean? Really? Did they? They did. They picked up those stories. I don't, and not in, not in the same way. I mean, like on TV and that sort of stuff. I don't, not in the same way. I mean, this is the thing, right? Is you risk at the time when everybody focuses on the games industry because the whole games industry is in one place. You risk not being a part of that conversation, and you risk letting the message become 
Microsoft versus Sony. No, it yeah, is. But, Nintendo but at the Mario. same time, they also, if they do have a press conference, they risk going up on stage with sure. the Wii U hardware, which is going to look really, really sad next I to think, the well, PS4 like, even if and the, they had the Xbox like 3. Three great game announcements. It's three game announcements against a whole new console. Like, yeah. it's just, it's not going to get the attention. This is going to be Xbox yeah, I think this is, year, I, I think a they console, made a really, really is. smart choice with this, and I don't think the Fallout's going to be nearly as bad as a lot of people expect. Yeah, I think I it's a smart choice. I'm personally I disappointed think, just because I love seeing their presentation you know, every I think, year, I think, but I think, I think it's they, ridiculous that if people they, are saying this go? is she, she was the one that I, think they're, I think they're managing <laughs> expectations, too. I think this gives them the opportunity to make a few surprise announcements, like very tactical uh, surprise announcements, or show off like hands-on with the HD Zelda or something like that, and all of a sudden people will be like, oh, wow, that's really great, and it'll get the fans whipped it's into an a angry frenzy. angry amoeba. <laughs> what, uh, yeah. on Gradius 3? Yeah. yeah. I thought he was saying his voice sounded like Sorry. Well, that's I know, right? <laughs> I was voicing the angry amoeba. An angry amoeba. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to jinx it right now, but I'm having a pretty damn good game with Gradius 3. Over here. I mean, here's, here's... Well, yeah, with all that slowdown, it's hard, hard to lose. <laughs> The risk, I mean, you know, the funny thing is, is that I think they could have stood pretty well on their own at this E3, um, because With they're going like to have the games, game. they're going to have the games, and, you know, Microsoft and Sony probably will have some decent looking games, but they're going to have, you know, kind of the stuff that's also available on their other consoles, and Nintendo would have been able to showcase stuff that you won't see on the other systems and therefore I think they could have been able to stand out fine. But but they can they can show that off in a more intimate setting. In a more, probably in a more, more effectively. In a, well, now you know. the, the press conference is a controlled setting. Let's down. not let's yeah. not get too too oh, crazy nothing. here. I'm just saying they have every second of what you see is controlled on so what is they a have. It's, a not press it's not live. A press conference is they're not gonna mess up their speech or anything. It's completely recorded. I don't know the, 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 let's 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 be real. The, the the quality of the Nintendo Direct presentation is is a little sketchy sometimes. The last one had like a hundred Luigi's. Come on. It had a hundred oh, Luigi's and also like people went, hello, thank you. I mean, no, 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 that was their Nintendo last Nintendo Direct is, is crap. Like the presentation is I, so bad. It's just I mean, like, I've the announcements of, are good, but man, yeah. That's, I've come really to love good. its sort of like Gorginous. horror movie sort of quality, totally. you yeah, know, yeah. in the way you sort of love like, you Nintendo know. trauma yeah. film director. Yeah. But, yeah. I, and I was going to say though, like that said, like Pre, you know, giant press events are, are not press events, but you know, conferences are terrible too. They're like my least yeah. favorite way of like learning about something. Which usually some exec coming out and talking so, about numbers for thirty minutes. And I mean, here's the thing: a press games. conference can be really some, bad. Everybody's but, such a bad speaker, you know. Yeah. Just like, oh, God. My, my thing is Except that for Reggie, he's great. You know? Wii U is not in a position of strength. So to me, if I'm Nintendo. You think I'm they're just going to be humble about it? Well, no. I'm taking every opportunity, every venue, every point of contact that I can where people are paying attention, particularly the press conferences, where everyone oh, expects slow. me to come out and showcase my vision against the others. Because, let's face it, that, con that contrast does matter. Um, I would take every opportunity to well, message I mean, my console. I also think about this, though. Like, what games are coming out in the near future for Wii U. Like, even if they get people so excited about Wii U, they're not going to go out and buy it with no games that they're terribly interested in, people who don't already have it. And the hype is already going to die by the time Wind Waker HD or any new games yeah, come out. That, so I mean, what's really the point? But that, I mean, well, what's the point of the Microsoft event? What's the point of the, play, the Sony event? These things well, can last. they're announcing a new system, new details no one's ever heard. Well, I mean, yeah, people so would like to see what the PlayStation 4 looks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <right. laughs> um, I mean, I, do you guys I, care about that? What the PlayStation 4 looks like? No. I, think it, I mean, I'm curious. Just All the PlayStation sort of, systems uh, have been ugly since the first I one. Care. I mean, I, I care in the way that I sort of am curious what any console would look like. Really, yeah. I mean, it's not like a huge problem. I mean, I bought a purple. I know it's black. Well, black and like aesthetics box. are one thing, but I, I guess like, I I'm kind of curious handle. about like you know what would be able to charge things. And I don't know. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I don't care about the box looks like that much either. Although I was reading a thing today that was about like, because Nintendo didn't show the box uh, for uh, for the Wii, yeah. for the Wii U, like people were just like, had no idea. I mean, here's, here's the thing, right? That it was a different system. Wii U's launch was effectively. Yeah, that was terrible. Wii U's launch was effectively a failure. Um, it like has if they had made it a sphere, people would like recognize it as a different <laughs> well, system. Well, it looks almost least. exactly like a Wii, just a little more rounded, a little longer. Yeah, so that I mean, was like, all. And it still used Wii remotes in all of the commercials. Like people just think it's a controller that came out for the Wii. Yeah, yeah. And, and Iwata sort of mentioned that in a fiscal report uh, or br briefing uh, yesterday. But I mean, like here's here's sort of all I'm saying. Like I don't. It's a good risk. I think it's you know it's clever of them. I don't know whether it works or not. Um, there are certainly some major risks associated with this in a year where. 
you know, maybe they need to take risks, but at the same time, like, you know, oh God. they've got a messaging problem with this system. This, a system that's not selling, Tell has them. no software, and has a f flawed vision, and has had poor marketing. So That was the best tail gun decision I've ever made. I, I was really proud of you right there, Sam. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, I just, I wonder, you know, I, I think that the press conference could have been an opportunity to recast the vision and sort of re-sort of strategize and rebrand the thing. Not like it's not going to be called Wii U, but like, you know, here's our new that message. Here's what, if they they took that, what if they took that prototype that. Wii controller that just had the Starman on it, yeah, right. and they made the Wii U system, the console <laughs> itself, look like that? Oh! Cool. Oh, Sam. You guys think this that was a good run. Thanks. Obviously, that, was, that was exciting. And it, the thing about Gradius... going to be... Like, are they not going to have presentations at E3 from now on, or is this just something they're well, experimenting with? Well, we'll see, right? If this works out for them and they feel like they, that their, their point got across and they felt like it was successful, uh, then yes, they will stop. You know, that yeah. they'll be like, okay, cool, we're right. done. Um, yeah. If it doesn't work, then, you know, I think we'll see them next year. I mean, and, and there's not, you know, who knows? Maybe E3 doesn't uh, exist in the form it exists in in, like, five years. I think that, you know, they tried to get rid of it a few years back, and it just... You know, they realize that it does have an importance and a certain value. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, you know, this is clearly a system that is not resonating with consumers. And so I just, you know, I think yeah, it's totally. pretty, this is a pretty, you know, it's funny, is at the height of Wii, mm -hmm. when that thing was just exploding, I would not have been surprised at all if they're like, we don't need a press conference. Well, that's when the press like, conferences yeah, got the very worst. Uh, that's yeah. when we sure. happened and, 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 and music. And oh the other thing God. was like, and everyone observed, like, you know, we music is not for us. And so why would you, you know, do that there? Um, I don't know. I just think But they that didn't have Nintendo Direct back then. I yeah, really think that haven't. that has changed their entire outlook it, on it how to deal with the press. It absolutely has. I just wonder if they are it's maybe off. being a little optimistic in exactly who is reaching this. I mean, Iwata was touting stats like hundreds of thousands of people watch Nintendo Direct on the 3DS. That's really cool, and I think that's really impressive. Also, those people already own the damn system you're trying to sell. Like, someone who doesn't well, own a 3DS isn't watching it. They also know that we watch them, and we will report on it. And if the story's big enough, the other outlets will pick it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I are mean, they, I'll, I'll say right now that our presentation of the E3 press conference is on an entirely different level because it is a landmark. You know, these are these are this is our the E3 E3 and the press conferences are the Super Bowl of the video game industry. Yeah, you know, so they, they are missing said, an opportunity to stream their press conference to IGN's Xbox app. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Do they I mean, realize they what they've done? I, I just, I, you know, here's the thing though: it's like, you know, people are not buying your console. And uh, two more consoles are about to show up, so you need to be able to, when everyone is paying attention to all consoles, say, hey, hey this is what makes our console unique and special, and this is why you should buy it. Not, oh, by the way, we're only really going to showcase this to Nintendo fans, you know? Turbo and graphics. Yes, we will write about it, but, like, if a Nintendo Direct show, this is the problem with Nintendo Direct, and this is the one flaw with Nintendo Direct. It shows up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And we all know this very well, doing what we do for a living, you know, if something shows up out of nowhere, not as many people are going to pay attention yeah. to it because they don't know that they're supposed yeah, to pay attention to it. I would hope that since they are relying on this instead of their live presentation, that they will let not just us, but the fans know when they're coming at least like a week or two out. Be like, hey, yeah. you know, check in to Nintendo Direct at this time. We're yeah. talking Wii U, I think, 3DS. I think the, just to get a little bit of hype going. I think the best they've done so far is maybe like two days or there was one point where Iwata was like, oh, we're going to do a 3DS Nintendo Direct eventually. And I think it was like the next week. Sometimes it's just hours before. And sometimes Sometimes it's a that matter of hours, yeah. um, and, and in Japan at least, they're like, oh, it's it's happening at 11 p.m. and it's like 9 p.m. and yeah. you're like, what? Um, I think they need to get better at that. And I mean, like, there's it's cool because it's spontaneous, and you're like, woo! But like, how many people are actually really paying attention to that? Not many. It's exciting. I mean, it makes us run around, but it's exciting to a fan. If I were a fan, I'd find that thrilling. But I'm also somebody as a fan who would be paying attention to Nintendo's okay. every move. Gamers. A lot of gamers do not do that. They walk into Walmart and they're like, uh, eh, this thing's weird. Or, yeah, you know, but I whatever. mean, the people who just, you know, go into Walmart and are like, I'm going to buy a video game that I find here, they're not paying attention to E3. So they either. pay attention to what their friends say, though, and I they feel do, like They do, but you know, information disseminates differently on the internet now than it did five years ago, and sure. forums and Reddit and, you know, places like that are arguably a lot more valuable to most gamers than, I hate to say it, sites like ours. Just because it's this kind of, you know, interactive space where they can talk to each other about stuff and they don't have to wait on the so-called experts 
to share their opinion. And you know, when when Nintendo directs control. get out there and and happen, uh, that news it gets picked up on forums and on aggregators and yep. you know the social media sites. And I, you know, I think that. Um, but it's the news that only Nintendo is disseminating. It's like the it's like it's the opposite of journalism. You know? Right. No. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, the and so you say Nintendo it's Direct for is to just talk about a Nintendo Direct. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying okay. I understand why they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. because well, it allows is, them to completely control the I message. Think it's, it's a weird thing. Like, it's, there's no, a reason. I, like, I don't. I don't personally read. think that the rise of Nintendo Directs is necessarily the best thing. But I understand that from Nintendo's perspective, it's absolutely the best I mean, thing because it allows them to control the message. It's along the same lines of like the the, the publisher blogs, like the you know the Sony blog and stuff like that. Except there's blog. more spectacle about it for Nintendo. There is, and I mean no one does this, but Nintendo the, these like mm -hmm. video based messaging things. Um, I mean again, you know we'll see. And if they if they tweak the messaging and kind of work to making these particular Nintendo directs much more of a, a happening in an event, more like the play. PlayStation 4 event that had three weeks of build up. Then the upcoming Xbox event on May 21st that's got about a month of, of build up. That's what they need to do. And guys, they you honestly have any should idea why you just kill a bunch of sleeping guys and bonk? Is it so sad? <laughs> I know what they I think it's because I'm on a. For those just mode. listening, that's what he's playing right now. <laughs> yeah. Not that random. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it, it, I, I, you know, a lot of people were asking me like, are you, are you? Uh, angry about this or are you happy about this because i mean like a lot of nintendo fans are like woohoo and like whatever although they'll say woohoo to anything but um like mario yeah exactly <laughs> just like mario um i well, don't I like. know you know i am very curious i find it fascinating um i'm not all that surprised and yet i am i'm both surprised and stunned you know i'm not surprised and stunned about did it did they do did they do 10 years of press press conferences is that essentially what i mean they've been doing press conferences since you know the N64 era. Yeah. So. Well, they started at some point though, because before that, they well, they were doing like I guess like a big audience. Ones, well, they mean, did these really small ones. They origin they originated the the like homegrown coverage thing with Nintendo Power. You know, I mean, like they were the guys that yeah. like started really perfecting like direct messaging to fans by yeah. creating newsletters. Which is and then the, a the exact equivalent of what direct is. And Basically, it's, it's not, the, direct it's is the modern equivalent. For, although I find it hilarious that they don't actually. Coverage. It's weird to me that they don't have a blog. You know, yeah. I actually find that a little strange, but. Uh, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not surprised Where's they've done meat? this forever. Um, it's funny, I've never really seen this game. Meat dissolves in water. Had a... Have you ever seen Bonk? Uh, not really. I mean, I was aware of Bonk, but I never had the system, so I just it's never the, really played uh, it. it. You could I've never played it this Bonk. I've played other Bonks. Yeah, it looks kind of dumb. Yeah. There's, no, it's, it's, a, it's a cool series. What? It's Come okay. on. It's not, this game is it so... It has so much personality for its yeah. time. Yeah, totally. I mean, look how different the Turbo graphics look. Yeah, I mean, it definitely looks different. I mean, like, it... Did you guys that. know that there's a Bonk for NES? And it's very hard to find. <laughs> Copy. But it's uh, it's really funny. It's it just you, after Turbo Graphics failed, they're like, meh. All right, whatever. Yeah. Just put it out on NES. Well, it's not like Hudson hadn't it published on NES different. before. See also. Oh, of like course. Yeah. So before we I'm go, let's try and answer here. a couple of weirder questions to the people. Oh, were we, we talking about E3? Time to time. <laughs> um. Dylan Wright wants to know what features with Mario Kart you have to have to get you guys excited. Uh, I want a track editor personally. Whoa, I don't want that. No. <laughs> no. Well, I don't think so. For I mean, Mario Kart. Well, I just think of all oh. the all the games that have editors right now that I don't care about. Yeah. I like want a little big cart. I don't know what I want from Mario Kart. I want Wii U. Uh, coins and shortcuts. I want every I can level from every game. Be in there. Maybe not not necessarily. Coins, coins have not only coins. been in three of the Mario Karts. Three yeah. of seven. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that I, I. You know, by honestly, Mario Kart is the, the one, the title of their sort of like arsenal that's coming that we're sort of aware of that I care least about. Well, I'll tell you, I have a lot of things I really care about. Like first of all, I, I really like it when the characters have very different powers and that the the carts are very different. So basically, Double Dash is my favorite. Yeah, you know, Double Dash is great. Hate that when I say that, and so does Fran because he gave it a 7.9. But well, uh, never left I don't know about that game. <laughs> but but like that that game like. You had, you know, you had to race to be the uh, turtle or the mushroom dude. Those are like by far the best characters, and like I think that like made the, the races much more interesting. They're just so it's different. The Instead of just having a heavy car. They were so amazing. I yeah, don't know I love why the they power ups. Those back. Oh, absolutely, yeah. 
That's what matters to me. But I also want more than the standard amount of levels. So I whether that's DLC or whatever, yeah. I, I, I'm tired of it being like, it, it, here's 16 old and 16 new. I'm, I would, I'm great with you know, what, what, I would, what I really want from Mario Kart Wii U or Mario Kart U or whatever it's called is for the game to be about skill again. Ever since Mario Kart Wii, they've really kind of dumbed the, the series down and made it more like a party game. You mean because and of the power sliding? No, not because of the power sliding, the because of like the rubber banding and all the powers. Well, I mean, it, it, there's right been there. this creep ever since Mario Kart 64, honestly, where it's easier and easier to come back from a loss. But Mario Kart Wii was the worst, where you could be in first place the entire race, and then at the last second, someone could very easily send you to last place. Yeah, yeah. I'd like and it, it feels I like there's no skill to earlier, winning that game. Can't figure out how. Yeah, I'd like them to take the customization to another level. Like, the communities in the 3DS version are great, but when it came to items, like, I'd love to just, like, in Smash Bros, be able to click on or off whichever items I want. Like, maybe I want to play with all of them, but I don't want blue shells because they piss me off. Yeah, like, I think yeah. it'd be great if, if there yeah, were different items shells. for different yeah. characters. Blue shells are the single worst thing that ever happened to like, about it's, It would be fine if it was, like, it used to be where every now and then it would happen. You'd be like, oh, man, that's too bad. But they happen so often in the recent games. It just yeah. feels mm -hmm. cheap. I mean, it, it, uh, I, would, I would actually be cool with them doing some DLC. I know <laughs> DLC is not popular. Like I would love to see like more characters and more tracks come. Oh, they're gonna do DLC. Later, don't you worry about that. I, I think so, but I mean, like, <laughs> it, it's a fire more emblem. Every game from it, Nintendo is going yeah. to have DLC. It's less about me like being like, oh, can't wait to pay for more junk. But like, I would just think it would be cool if my interest in the Mario Kart game lasted longer than all the unlockables and all the stuff that right. I get. Well, I beat 50 it. CC. I beat 100 CC. I beat 150 CC. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think it would be kind of cool. And I mean, yeah, it comes at a cost, but. I'm okay with that. I mean, I think it'd be cool if, like, six months later, they're like, oh, hey, by the way, Wart is coming. playable. It's Luigi Kart. Like, coming. Yeah. What about yeah. this? Yeah. What about if they finally added maybe, like, everything in and made it Nintendo Kart instead of having just the Mario franchise? I'm yeah. getting pretty now, damn tired of Mario that's crazy talk. Yeah. No one wants to race if there was uh, Smash Brothers esque, you know, all all inclusiveness. I, I did a Photoshop about awesome. this, Sam. We'll have you know. Yeah. It's I mean, on the I'd, side somewhere. I think it would be funny. I mean, like, I I would prefer them. Not. Do you guys, do you think those look suspicious? I think they look suspicious. Totally. Suspicious. No, I think those like are I think those are background elements like hazard lights. Basically. Why did they have me come over here? Though? Oh, the volcano is dangerous. Do I need to bonk something? Tell me I need to Probably bonk that's something. The name I think you always need to bonk something. <laughs> um, yeah, I but mean, only the it, British. Uh, I, I would like to see. I, I think it'd be cool to see guy, uh, like Kirby and stuff like that. I don't think I'd want like Link per se. I think that's just like a weird fit. Same thing. Right a no, I, I mean, it works in yeah. Smash Bros. Yeah. Actually, that'd be pretty funny. Yeah, you know what I want to have Sonic have the in there, but he just runs. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, there could be some funny ideas there. Yeah. I, I would prefer they only be like kind of very specialized bonus characters or something versus like core parts of the series if they're going to do well, that. Well, they went so far as to add in Funky Kong. You know, why can't we get, you know, characters we care Yeah, about? I love to have like the crazier <laughs> characters. Like they've had Dry Bowser like, before, I think it's already funny like that, that Donkey Kong's again. in that universe in in the rare, rare version of Donkey Kong because you don't see Mario in Donkey Kong games except for the Mario and Donkey Kong games, games you know? And yes, I know Donkey Kong and Mario started out together. That's not the point. The point is that <laughs> if, if it's going to be that Donkey Kong, it should be like a cool sprite Donkey Kong, not the Funky Kong here. Um, stuff. What's the next question? All right. I'm going to write some fan fiction based <laughs> on this. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, wow. This took a turn. Okay. Joker Madhouse says, do you think motion, game, uh, motion games are dead? Uh, can, we, can we hope? Yeah, <laughs> right. I... Yeah, I, mean, I mean, Nintendo sort of got the struggle of like, well, can we make a game that has relies heavily on motion? Yeah, they've been reluctant to step it. away completely from it. I was it. thinking I, today, we used still there was never a it. definitive first-person shooter with pointer controls that was just like everybody should be playing the Wii. Like there were games that worked, and there was Metroid, yes, yes, the Metroid trilogy, but there was never like a game that was. Just, like, I remember or like, like there so RTS much hype about that. Yeah, I mean, Pikmin will use it, right? Or an RTS, yeah. That's good. Other than that, we don't know. Uh, I don't know if... I mean, apparently the next Zelda game will probably use it in some way. Um, but I don't know if too many... Uh Oh wait, is it? Well, did they say, have they said whether they're moving away from motion control for the next Zelda game? I can't remember. That's a turtle. I think they I think AR they, is probably replacing motion do, controls. They said they wanted to do motion controls for the next game. They didn't um, definitively say that it would be that, but yeah. they said that they really liked them for Skyward Sword, and they didn't really yeah. want to give that up because they came up with that whole. I I, I think game. they. I mean, this is yet another reason why well, Wii U is so confusing. Yeah, I mean that's well that's the thing, that's right? It's like that's such a huge problem with like. 
the new system is like, well, can you do this thing that made you so successful if you don't have it as a core part of your system? Yes. So, I don't know. I, I mean, that was yet another mistake on their part. But anyway, uh, I don't know if it's dead per se, but, you know, it looks something like Game & Wario doesn't use it at all. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, most well, have shield they, pose most does. people I mean, have shield it. I mean, in terms of uh, the Wii Remote, I mean, it uses the pad. No, yeah. You move the game pad around it. Not. Colin Lee says, what are the potential benefits of having uh, Satoru Iwata as president of NOA? <laughs> a lot of people seem confused about what this actually I have means. No for idea. I, mean, so I don't think it means we're going to get more of the Japanese It means he can follow through on his promise to step down as president of, Nintendo, in, uh, of NCL if they don't hit their budget and he'll still be in power. I mean, officially... It's a Game of Thrones? <laughs> officially, he said he's going to be, you know, closer in order to accelerate the strengths of international performance. That's all... Guys, first of all, this is all I ever inspired, aspired to be. Intermediate level. Right. <laughs> Isn't that serendipity? Um, yeah. Well, that's pretty funny. Intermediate is only four stages. Um... Yeah, I mean, officially the idea is that, oh, you know, uh, outside of, of Japan, Nintendo hasn't been performing well, so Iwata's sort of taking direct control to, to kind of watch over things. Assuming direct control. I mean, I, w I would <laughs> love it. so evil, Jerry. I would love That's it. That's just what that we needed is somebody, so, you know, so out of touch with America that all these decisions over the well, years the, have been he forced. He speaks English, I mean, though. Well, here's the thing. What do you need? The weird thing is yeah. that he lives in a time zone that's basically opposite ours. So I don't, I don't, don't care about picky. that. I, don't <laughs> I like really the time matters. zone argument. I don't think that really matters. <laughs> but I would say that, He's like, practically upside down. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's not in Australia, Sam. I mean, Still, <laughs> on the other side of the earth. Yeah. Look, here's the thing. is like, you know, it clearly wasn't working what they were doing now. So... And Japan was doing pretty well, so we'll see. And also, I, no one had ever heard of the guy who was replacing Yeah, I, I'd heard of him, but I could never remember No, his I'm name just saying, he's he not was, one of the more public No, he was figures. not at all. Like, everyone knows Can Reggie, somebody here no guide me it. through Toe Jam and Earl 2 nope. if I play it? <laughs> I remember that game. Yeah, I mean, whoever he's replacing was basically, like, I, I assume the dude just sat in his office with his hand, head in his hand. <laughs> and was like, <sighs> I mean, I would How do I get love the numbers it? up? I would love it if some of that means that, you know, some of the 3DS strategy for Japan carries over like more colors, more, you know. But Mother I 3, finally <laughs> in America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll see. I don't know that there's any like major media. I think it impacts like NOA employees, but I don't yeah. know if the consumers will see a yeah, huge difference right away. Difference. It might, it, you know, it might mean that it's easier communication between Nintendo of Japan and Nintendo of America, and that's I probably a good so. thing That'd for be everybody. So great. Yeah. That Maybe he's going to bring his development uh, history and expertise to Nintendo software technology, and they'll <laughs> finally start making games again. Yeah, right. I ain't. You Do know, they still exist? Uh, maybe it means less, you know, shorter localization times because NOA and, and Nintendo Japan can work closer together. I don't know. I, I, mean, I imagine it's probably going to be a higher level business. It strategy probably than is. That. It's probably more technical yeah. stuff. It's that not. We're not it's aware not going to be the particulars that we'll actually see at the like Although, the gaming level. I mean, Iwata says the goal is to turn around that business. And how do you turn around that business? You're going to be releasing more games. You're going to be paying more attention to the market, getting more product out there, getting better product out there. So detonate a bomb inside of Apple headquarters. Oh, you mean the ghost woman of the temple? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Something terrible Sperm. has happened. Best story ever. Uh, yeah, that is weird. Uh, anyway, next question. Okay, cool. We'll do one more question from Mike Ironfist. <laughs> Tell us what you think Nintendo will announce during E3 in light of their decision <laughs> to not do a big conference. Oh. So uh, basically, well, what do you think they're going to bring? I mean, I don't think that... I think the whole idea, right, is that... I mean, and this, and, and this E3 might be a disappointment E3. to some fans. I don't think once right, E3 story. arrives, they're going to announce stuff. Yeah. I think that's I the disagree. Whole idea. I think they're going to hold on to one or two, like, key sequels that fans really, really want. Just uh -huh. to get them frothing. When? When do they announce those? They have those evening uh, roundtable sure. things. Yeah. Sure. Well, they yeah, did last year. They did like a thing where they announced it. So one of the things was just remember it was 3DS crap. Like so we already yep. seen. I last year, the third one had something really good in it. Right? No, so last year they announced literally nothing. The okay. year before that, the only thing they announced was that Pikmin was actually coming to Wii. And then Reggie let it slip. What? And the, yeah, last Fire year Emblem Reggie accidentally running. slipped that Fire Emblem was coming. And that was before that, the they conference. announced Skyward Sword in one of those bonus events. Yeah, I just collected okay. a cat, guys. Yeah, a few years back it was Skyward Sword, and a few, and they think the year before that it was the reveal of Brawl. So they. It's so what do they do this year? Because remember, remember they did the second conference that was just like Mario Two, and we're like, yeah, we've seen that. But then what was the third one? They had a third one, remember? Well, so the first night uh, well, The third was one was like Mirror of Fate and some other stuff. Yeah, was there was a 3DS, 3DS showcase stuff? one night. One night was on Miiverse, and then before the show, they had a Miiverse thing. So they had two. They had a pre-E3 Miiverse. They had the press conference. They had an evening Miiverse, and then they had 3DS. 
and none of those, I mean, they unveiled Miiverse in the pre-show, but everything else was not very revelatory. I mean, yeah, uh, it would be cool if they kept something. I personally am not really expecting them to, but, you know, you don't know. I mean, they could do like a, you know, uh, Onuma does an update on Zelda Guys, Wii Guys, am I beating up people with a pipe? Yeah, yes, uh, it's his pipe. Never oh, you never played this before. That's no. right. Yeah, it's a pipe. He, he's based on the... Goemon Ishikawa, who was kind of like the Robin Hood of Japan. I wish we had a uh, Pocky and Rocky on this. That'd be cool. Man, that game is so good. <laughs> what is he? Uh, what's he token? Just All tobacco. right. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for this week's episode. What's of so mystical? Super NVC. Uh, be sure to send your questions, and comments, whatever, to nvc at ign.com. You can follow us all on Twitter, and we'll see you next week, Kooplings. <laughs>